Today we're going to begin a very exciting journey to an untroubled heart. Jesus said to his followers, do not let your heart be troubled. And I found out by personal experience that when my heart is troubled, I get into trouble. And yet we neglect what the scriptures have to say about the heart. So what I want to do in these lectures is focus us, focus us on the heart that we have, our spiritual heart. Because when we don't understand how the heart works, the spiritual heart, we have problems and difficulties and behavioral issues, and we don't know the source of those. And so we try to be involved in behavior modification without going to the source. So this is a journey, it's a process, and we'll begin that today. I had to take the journey myself. It was a painful journey, but so very worthwhile. I was not raised in a Christian home. I had no knowledge of scripture or who Jesus Christ was. And when I was 19 years of age, I placed my faith and trust in Christ. And he made me a new creature, but my heart was still wounded within me. And some of the unresolved issues of my heart worked their way to the surface and created major problems for me. And I had to step back and examine very carefully what was really happening inside at the deepest level. We talk about spiritual formation and really a major part of spiritual formation is getting in touch with our hearts and having that untroubled heart that we'll explore. When we don't do that, the cycle is predictable. And Dr. Allen, who was a former teacher of psychiatry at Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown University, he said it very clearly. He said, the cycle is predictable. It goes like this. Internal pain, a void, a sense of inadequacy, love hunger, or loss. But it manifests itself as shame, anxiety, guilt, depression, anger, or boredom. And the vulnerable person, that was me, tries to alleviate this pain or get comfort through some type of anesthetic. Drugs, alcohol, relationships, work, rage, sex, food, or gambling. The anesthetic relieves the situation temporarily, but later it generates even more serious consequences, intense guilt, remorse, and dissatisfaction with self. So it's important that whatever unresolved issues are in our life, that we find them, that we deal with them by God's grace, by taking the journey to our heart. If we don't, they will work their way to the surface and create problems for us. What we don't work out, we end up acting out. So my prayer for each of us that are listening to these lectures is, is this. The psalmist in Psalm 109, verses 21 and 22 said this. This was his prayer. O sovereign Lord, deal well with me for your namesake. Out of the goodness of your love, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. We all have a wounded heart. Some more deeply wounded than others but all of our hearts have been wounded. Life is hard on the heart, but we neglect it. We don't understand it. And hopefully in these lectures, we'll come to a new understanding and appreciation of how vital our heart is. Let me give you an overview of where we're going in these lectures. Here's the topics we'll be exploring. How important and needy your heart is. How God can miraculously change your heart. How to deal with the three main obstacles that keep our hearts from being free. How to strengthen your most important treasure, which is your heart. How to keep the heart empowered. That's sort of a roadmap where we're going in these lectures. We need to begin the lectures by understanding the heart biblically. 
That will be our first major topic, to try to get a good grasp of what the Bible is talking about when it refers to the heart. In this, in this session, Understanding the Heart Biblically, we're going to define the heart, a definition of the heart, try to get a clear understanding, a definition of what we're talking about. And we're going to talk about the dimensions of the heart. The heart has dimensions to it, three very important ones that we'll explore. Then the diagnosis of our heart, how God diagnoses our heart. And then the descriptions of the heart that the Bible gives. And then the devastation of the heart. How did the heart get in the condition that it is? First of all, let me just uh, explain a little bit how we use the word heart and why we use it that way. Sometimes we talk about a heartache. We have a problem, a difficulty in life. We say, I have a heartache. Sometimes we say that my heart is broken. A tragedy has happened and I have a broken heart. Sometimes when we're feeling great, we say, I, I feel very lighthearted today. And sometimes when we're discouraged and had people ask us to do something, we say, my heart is just not in it. Or if we want to have an intimate conversation with somebody, we say, I, I need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. And sometimes we uh, say, let's go to the heart of the matter. We've talked about all these other things. We use it in so many different ways, but all of the ways we use it are an attempt to say that that's the deepest level of our being. And the heart, I like to picture the heart like the spokes of a, like the center of a bicycle. The heart is like the center of the bicycle where all the spokes converge and all the spokes emanate from that. It's the very center of our being. It's the center of our personality. It's a metaphor for the center of our being, the deepest level. And when you come to the scriptures, you're overwhelmed by the fact that God's primary target is the human heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. There's over a thousand references in the Bible to the heart. Some of them, a few of them, have to do with the physical heart, but the majority of them are talking about the spiritual heart. The heart is what God addresses in man. The heart is what God deals with in man. The heart was what Jesus cared the most about. Jesus was the supreme authority on the heart. So let's look at some other definitions, but first of all, understanding there's a literal definition of the heart. It's that pump that we have. It's the center of our physical life. And when our physical hearts are not right, nothing is right. So we understand that, that literally speaking, the heart is just a pump, but it's the center of our physical life. Metaphorically, when the Bible uses the heart, it's talking about it's the source of our spiritual life. Everything emanates from the heart. It's the richest biblical term we have for the totality of man's immaterial nature. One man has defined it this way. He said it's the executive center for human life. The heart is where the decisions and choices are made for the whole person. It's the source of our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our actions. It's the basic motivational structure of our life. That's a quick definition of the heart. But what I want to talk about now is the dimensions of the heart. What intrigued me greatly was this. When Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, on one occasion in Matthew 9, 4, interesting. Jesus didn't say, why are you thinking evil thoughts in your mind? He said, why are you entertaining evil thoughts in your heart? So the mind is one of the dimensions of the heart. On another occasion, when Jesus was uh, dealing with the Pharisees, Scripture, Mark 3, 5 says, Jesus looked around at them in anger, and he was deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. 
not their stubborn wills, their stubborn hearts. So you begin to put that together, the mind, the will, then you have the disciples on the Emmaus Road. And they were commenting to each other, weren't our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture? That has to do with the emotions. Our hearts were burning within us. So you begin to put that together. The mind, the will, the emotions are all dimensions of the heart. It's just another way to say that the heart is the deepest, most central part of our being. And we talk sometimes about the soul being the mind, will, and emotions. It's just as correct to say the heart encompasses the mind, the will, and the emotions. So we have a definition of the heart, and we have the dimensions of the heart. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.